just tell us um, how did you find yourself in oceanography and study and exploration of the oceans? It started actually from a very young age to getting into oceanography and exploration. Um, I grew up in San Diego, California, and spent a lot of time at the beach swimming or sailing or really doing whatever I could in and around the water. But it wasn't until college that I realized that that could actually be a part of my career and in my professional life when I discovered that ocean engineering existed and I had the opportunity to go to sea with Dr. Robert Ballard to look for shipwrecks in the Black Sea. Now what is ocean engineering? Ocean engineering actually spans quite a lot of different things. It includes um, designing and building structures in the water, naval architecture, so designing ships, um, hydrodynamics, acoustics, so sonar and how sound works in the water. That's quite a broad range. And also uh, robotics, so designing and building remotely operated vehicles, autonomous vehicles, any kind of robotic vehicles that go in the water. Fabulous. Now you mentioned that you came to meet Dr. Bob Ballard and work with him. I did, yes. I, in college, I had the opportunity to go to sea with him and his team to uh, Turkey and the Black Sea to look for ancient shipwrecks. And that really was my first foray into exploration and, and sent me down that path. Right. Now, uh, Ballard is very well known, of course, for the discovery and exploration of the Titanic the wreck of the Titanic. Did you get a chance to work with him on any of those I, type of projects? I did. Um, in, right before I went to graduate school um, in 2004, we went back to the Titanic to the site to see how it had changed really since the first time that he had discovered and explored it in the 80s. And what did you find? Um, we found that it was relatively still intact, although there's a lot of corrosion to the hull and the superstructure, and there had been um, quite a lot of the artifacts that had been collected by um, a commercial organization, a salvage organization called RMS Titanic. Um, but other than that, it's still down there in the in the North Atlantic. Still there, down yeah, among the dead men. Yeah. Yep. Um, but you've also did some exploration work in the Mediterranean, I believe. Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, during graduate school at the University of Rhode Island, and then after I graduated, I continued working with Dr. Ballard at the Ocean Exploration Trust. And we spent uh, several years in the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, the Aegean Sea, um, really looking for anything that we might find in some of the unexplored areas. So that includes ancient shipwrecks or underwater volcanoes or new ecosystems on the, on the deep sea floor. So every now and then you must come across a wow moment where you just shriek with joy or exuberance you found something can you think of one of those or two of those i can think of lots of those <laughs> absolutely um definitely finding ancient shipwrecks because it, you know, it's very different from looking for something specific where you might kind of have an idea of where it is like i'm sure you know when bob found the titanic or some of the other shipwrecks that he's looking for specifically in these areas we don't know there aren't records there aren't you know passenger lists of when these shipwrecks went down because there was a thousand two thousand years ago um, so anytime we found something like that was very very exciting and what sort of things do you find when you come across such a shipwreck yeah in those cases they were you know a thousand two thousand years old so the sort of shipping container of the ancient world is an amphora, which is a ceramic vessel that would have carried oil or wine or fish sauce or some other commodity um, around the Mediterranean. Wow. Okay. And with all that experience and all that knowledge behind you, here you are on the one of the inaugural voyages of the National Geographic Venture down here on the Baja California coast. What are you doing here? Well, a couple of things I'm doing here on the National Geographic Venture. One is serving as a National Geographic Explorer, so sharing what I do, my experience in deep sea exploration and some of the discoveries with the guests who are on board, but also talking to some of the staff and kind of trying to check out how we might use uh, Lindblad's fleet of ships for deep sea exploration and science and education because um, these vessels go to some of the most remote places in the world that have yet to be explored. Sure. So it's really exciting to think about um, the possibilities for ships like this. And um, these uh, are these expeditions going to include guests? Are guests going to be able to join 
these type of explorations or would they be part and parcel with what the ships are already doing? Yeah, what we're hoping to do is to include um, some type of science and exploration on board while guests are on board as well. So they can be a part of that. Maybe it's deploying remotely operated vehicles or deep sea drop cameras in some of these places that have never been seen before. And then the guests get that experience, but then also we're using uh, the data that we collect for better understanding our planet. Thank you very much, Dr. Katie, one of Lindblad Expedition's Ocean Explorers. Thank you.